Well, for more on Trump's meetings in Paris over the weekend, I'm joined in studio by Doga Eralp, who is a professional lecturer at the School of International Service at American University. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. So let's start with the way that President Trump navigated his meetings over the weekend. What's your take? Well, uh, President Trump acted more like a loner, but I think he, he was still contemplating about the results of the midterm elections. So it took him a while kind of to figure out that he was actually on a rather uh, quite a relaxing weekend, but he, I think his mind was still in Washington. So he didn't really participate in a number of commemorative events. So then in terms of whether the visit was a success or not, any key accomplishments or obviously a lot of disappointments also stood out? Well, I think one important uh, result of this uh, visit for President Trump, he actually got a uh, chance to exchange his opinion about uh, the possibility of uh, standing European army with President Macron. And he saw his uh, friend, uh, President Putin. That's a good thing. But other than that, I think uh, the impression that President Trump gave in this summit was rather that U.S. would continue to go alone, especially vis-a-vis -vis its presence in Europe. Now, there was quite an awkward moment as uh, French President Emmanuel Macron was giving his speech and talking about nationalism versus um, patriotism. And in a tweet, Macron said that patriotism is the exact opposite of nationalism. It's a betrayal of patriotism. And by putting our own interests first with no regard for others, we erase the very thing that a nation holds dearest and that thing that keeps it alive, its moral values. Now, we know that President Trump said himself that he's a nationalist. And judging by some of the trends we've seen in elections in Europe, they may be following the same path. Do we know how Europe overall receives President Trump? Well, uh, obviously, far-right leaders or more populist on the right uh, wing of the political aisle, uh, those leaders are looking up to Trump's performance in the United States, and they recalibrate their populist policies, looking at President Trump's success in the United States. So. Uh, from the perspective of such leaders, yes, Trump is one leader that uh, many European leaders look up to. But on the other hand, we also need to take into account that there's a really strong European liberal tradition uh, as a result of two really big important world wars that they learned that go it alone is never the right way out. So uh, we definitely would see a resurgence of such political parties as well in Europe. certainly seems fitting on the, on the anniversary of, uh, of World War I. Now, obviously, we know that President Xi is expected to meet with uh, President Trump at the G20 summit in Argentina. Just how important is this meeting at this period in time? This is one of the more important meetings of our, uh, let's say, past decade or so, because uh, as you may very well be following, the uh, metal prices seem to be affected by the ongoing tensions between US and China. And uh, all of the world markets would be watching that meeting in, at G20. So for President Trump, the a meeting that's going to be taken at the end of the month is really the most important meeting before, I would argue, the year end. So if they come up with an agreement, then the world markets would actually take a deep, deep brief sigh, and we'll see. So with that in mind, then, what's your outlook for the G20? Well, I think it's uh, going to be a contentious summit. Uh, both the Chinese leadership and the U.S. Trump administration are looking into uh, score certain relative games, uh, but obviously there are certain voices within the U.S. administration and the U.S. bureaucracy that are looking into really uh, what's in there for U.S. to gain from a more confrontational approach with China. Now, we know that President Trump is also going to be skipping a lot of these Asian economic meetings, including APEC and ASEAN. What, if anything, should we read into that? Well, uh, my impression is President Trump at this point in time is trying to recalibrate his domestic politics in the uh, United States and his main focus after that would be his meeting with President Xi in China. Up until then, any other summit is for him that uh, couple summits that he could just skip. So being that the midterms are, are, are ser seriously just like right behind us, that we've just had them, and we also saw now that President Trump is now also having to deal with a divided Congress, as well as all these trade deals that are still up in the air, what do you think his economic priorities are right now? Well, his economic priorities at this point is to deliver his promises. So uh, right after the midterm elections, uh, the results started popping up. Uh, President Trump actually started his 2020 campaign. So as part of his 2020 campaign, he now has to deliver rather urgently to his constituencies in Rust Belt states that he's bringing the jobs back, he's being tough on China. So all these domestic concerns would definitely impact his negotiation position vis-a-vis -vis his meeting with President Xi. Highly anticipated one indeed. 
Thank you so much, Doga Eral, professorial, I'm sorry, professional lecturer at the School of International Service at American University.